morning. Hey, hello. Oh, excuse me. Sorry for my wife. Where are you? People are trying to sit next to me. Hey! Hey! No, 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 no. Don't let your guard down. Not even for them. Seats taken. Seats taken? I sound like Forrest Gump. But I earned my space. Nine years sitting in the same seat Sunday after Sunday. Man, it is crowded. What is this, Southwest Airlines? This Bible can only hold the seat for so long, and this donut, this donut's about to be eaten. Church would be so great if it weren't for the people. It's not that I don't like people, I just, I just like there to be a buffer. I need my personal space, and I like my chair. This is my chair, we're buddies, we're friends, we're amigos. Oh, an announcement? What? Scoot in? Hey, who do you think you are? What do you mean, scoot in? We don't scoot in here. My wife's gonna be here any minute. Uh, there she is. Honey, sweetie, your chair, huh? My wife just ghosted me. Oh, the seat's cold. Now I'm crowded. What, what is wrong with these people? Everyone knows that that is my chair. Maybe she's new. Mm, fine, 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 fine. Just settle in here since you're clearly stuck for a while. This is a challenging sermon for me because I like Kimpton as much as the next person. But however, I'm going to ask you the question this morning. Like, what is it that you find comfortable? What is it that you go home and dance with every night rather than serving a word? What did you just say, Pastor? Okay, big guy. Now you're getting a little too personal, all right? Look. I've been through some extreme change the last year or so, okay? But I haven't stayed the same. Have I? Or have I just been sitting in cement? No, 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 no. I do stuff. I do stuff. I help. I serve. I help serve at that kid service four years ago. And I invited my neighbor to that outreach event thingy. Well, well, I didn't verbally invite him. But you know, I've got work and I'm busy. I am just so busy. And I don't mean to sound selfish, but... But if you want me to do something, then you're just going to have to give me a sign. Yeah, yeah, a sign. Just one sign is all I pray for, and I will go, and I will get out of this not-so-comfy chair and use my gifts and talents for the kingdom. Just one sign, that's all I need. I feel something. What is this? Is that gum? Disgusting! Now I got gum on my pants. Who, who would put gum on my chair? Now I have to get a new chair. Oh. He's looking at me. Message loud and clear, God. Touche, Lord. Touche. Here am I. Send me. Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful day out. Why don't you join me? We're going to praise God today. The battle belongs to you and every fear. 
here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, and you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to announcements this morning. Good morning. Um, just a reminder, October is Pastor Appreciation Month, so be sure to um, show your appreciation to all our pastors here, and um, not just in October, but all the time, but get them something or take them to eat or whatever you want to do. Um, we have kids quizzing tonight and teen quizzing, uh, teen quizzing at 4.30, kids quiz at 5.00. We don't have a meal for tonight, so if somebody wants to make something, um, there's some buns in the back left over, so if you want to make something, use those or not. If somebody wants to take the buns home, that's fine. Um, let's see, uh, October 31st is Halloween. We have our fall festival for that. Um, this Wednesday is ladies' night dinner at Pueblo Lindo at 6.30. There's always um, child care here at the church, so um, if you want to use that, talk to Carrie about that. We have a kids quiz November 4th and a teen quiz November 11th. So there any other announcements that I forgot? Oh, Tuesday night Bible study is on, so special week this week. Um, Julie Burgess is back, so, um, so join her for that. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. All right, you guys can stand. We're going to sing one more time here.
Kids to come on up at this time and join Maria. Good morning. Can we try that again? Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> good job. Do you, do you guys, did you guys tell someone good morning this morning? I was what I was. You were okay. Well, that's okay. How about when we are on our way out, you, t you tell someone in the congregation good morning? Can we do that? Because we want to welcome everyone to church, right? Everyone's welcome at church. Everyone. And we want to make sure that they're happy to be here. So can someone tell me who a hero is? Justice, what do you think a hero? Oh, God. You think God's a hero? What makes God a hero? Okay. Justice, do you know, what, what would you describe a hero? Who is a hero to you? And it could be a person you know or a superhero. Or the owl. What's uh, what makes the owl a hero? <laughs> what about Batman? Ooh, I think Pastor Adam's hero is Batman. <laughs> um, but a hero is someone who is brave. Do you think Batman's pretty brave? Yeah, and courageous. Is your owl brave? Um, so all of the heroes in the Bible are pretty brave. They did some pretty brave things. Um, the story for today is from the Old Testament, and it's from a guy named Joshua. Joshua was really brave. Do we know the story of Joshua? And if you don't, that's okay, because we'll learn it today. But Joshua, he kind of took over after Moses, which Moses is a big name. So Joshua had to take over for Moses, because Moses died, and Joshua had to, leave, had to lead a really big battle. So we're going to learn about that today, and we're going to learn about how God helped Joshua become a hero that God needed him to be and how we can all be heroes for God. 
And then we're also going to keep learning the books of the Bible that include Joshua. We're going to learn uh, the first 17 books of the Bible. We'll be able to say them out loud, okay? So why don't we head on back, and on your way back, I want you to go up to someone, shake their hand, and say, good morning, I'm glad you're here. Can you do that? I'll do it with you, too. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. Uh, hey, Phil turned 50 on Thursday. You don't look a day over 49. It's okay, Phil. 43, right? 43, was that right? Okay. I was ill-prepared. Can you believe that? Okay, there we go. Huh? You believe it. I know you believe it, right? If you all saw what happened behind the scenes, you would probably think I was weirder than I really am. Uh, hey, we, we, uh, just a reminder, just double-taking what uh, Julie said earlier, we really could use a meal tonight, um, or else we're going to have some kids crying because there's no food. So if, <laughs> it's not, no guilt, right? No, uh, but if somebody could uh, definitely fill that gap, that would be great. We would appreciate it, and they would appreciate it. Um, I don't know, anything else? Anything else going on? Mm, no. Rita's uh, cousin, Jerry, had open heart surgery on Thursday. Yeah? So he is at least going in the right direction from his heart attack last week. Um, so we'll keep him in prayer as well. Uh, how is uh, Harold? Thank you. My, my card's gone. Okay. Oh. Okay. Good. Yes. Okay, okay. We'll keep Harold in prayer as well. Oh, anything else? Layton's job says he's, he's doing well. They haven't let him go yet. Uh, that's good news. Yeah, that's good. That's good. As long as you're covered for Monday, then everything's fine, right? <laughs> oh, so today we're going to wrap up our four-week series in his words. Uh, so each week, if, you've, if you're just joining us online, um, each week we've taken a look at, at one of the Jesus I Am statements uh, from the Gospel of John where Jesus reveals uh, his true nature to us. The truth is, as, as, we, as we start to understand who Jesus is, we can start to see how he is working in us and honestly throughout the world too. So far we have heard him say, I am the bread of life. We've heard him say, I am the light of the world. We've heard him say, I am the gate or the door, whichever translation you're reading. Uh, so each of these statements is, is powerful in its own way, and all of them together starts to paint a picture for us uh, of an amazing, all-powerful, kind, and generous Savior. And because of this, Jesus can with confidence say that we'll, we'll read in a minute in John 15 when Jesus talks about being the vine. So who here wants to do something with their life? It, it's not rhetorical. Raise your hand. Who wants to do something with your life? If you're all not raising your hand, we need to have a discussion later this week. Schedule some time with me if you haven't raised your hand to that question. Oh, gosh. 
you guys, I tell you. Yeah, all the adults are like, I've given up already. <laughs> well, who hopes that they've made some sort of impact on, on someone or something already here before they leave earth? Okay, most of you. Some of you still did not raise your hand. That's, I don't know that I'm doing my job, God. Oh, well, I have, until now, never heard anybody, oh no, hold on, there we go, say that they didn't want their life to amount to anything, <laughs> except for apparently you guys. Uh, okay, so as we read these verses, though, in John 15, we're going to read 1 through 5, we, we need to reflect on what Jesus is saying here. How do you stay connected to him? And what's the fruit that Jesus is speaking about in these verses? So these are, these are a couple of the questions that I hope that we can answer today as we look at this together. So it may help to just go ahead and jump in and read this. So we're going to look at John chapter 15, primarily verse 5, but we're going to read through 1 through 5. It says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He, he, cuts us off, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Verse 5 is, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So the power of Jesus that we see here in, in John 15, it comes, out of, it comes out of his divine nature. We know that God was, um, or Jesus, was fully man and fully God. This part comes out of the God nature, the divine nature. He's the vine, the, the source of, of life and sustenance for the branches. And he gains his power by being connected to his Father, or God. So this metaphor does a, a great job of encapsulating the, the relationship between Jesus and his followers. Just like the, the branch can't survive, let alone bear fruit, without the vine, we also can't thrive spiritually without a deep and abiding connection to Jesus. So this powerful connection, isn't, it's not just about sustaining life, but also about enabling growth and fruitfulness. The fruit that Jesus talks about in this, this verse, it's not just a reference to, to good deeds or moral behavior. It's not just doing something good. It's, it's a deeper metaphor for the, for the character traits that the Holy Spirit cultivates in us when we maintain an intentional connection and relationship with Jesus. So, fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. There are others. This is not an exhaustive list. But these, these aren't qualities that we can manufacture ourselves. Okay? These aren't just things that we have naturally as humans. These are fruit that are that are born into us of jesus power as jesus starts working in and through us through the holy spirit so for those of you who have said that they haven't felt the holy spirit move in their lives yet which some of you have, have said that um here's your breakthrough if you haven't felt the holy spirit move in your life you can now because if you possess any of these traits any of these characteristics you can thank the Holy Spirit for giving them to you. It's that simple. So already, if you are kind, and I think all of you are pretty kind, at least you pretend to be, to me. I don't know what you do throughout the week, but you're nice to me. Then the Holy Spirit's working through you. God works in and through our lives when we don't even have a clue sometimes. Sometimes we're just, we feel like we're just being us. So no matter who you are or what part of your journey that you're on, if you put your faith in Jesus, you're a vessel for the Holy Spirit. So it's not always waiting on some magical event to happen. 
I think a lot of people wait for that. They're waiting for something to click, that sign from God. It, it's not always that. Sometimes we just need to open our eyes to what's already going on around us and in us and kind of just accept our, our aha moment. So the, the power of Jesus is very transformative. It changes us from the inside out. So when we abide in Jesus, we're not just an improved version of ourselves. We don't just improve from where we are. The Bible says we're a completely new creation, reborn and renewed in his power. So old Adam is not the same as new Adam. There are no, no similarities in the creation that we are, old and new. I may still possess some of the things that I used to possess, but we are completely new creation. So this, this transformation isn't just a, a one-time event, but a, it's a lifelong process. Entire sanctification is, is a grace event that happens once. But, in, but sanctification, and we can get into the differences of that later if you want, but sanctification happens through your entire journey. It prepares us. It prepares us for entire sanctification and it prepares us for glorification after we pass away. So as we continue to abide in Jesus, his power continually works in us, kind of molding us more and more into to what we should be. And it's, it's through this same power that, that we're saved from sin and death. And I think that's pretty amazing. So Jesus, the vine, was cut off and died so that we, the branches, could live. His, his resurrection power conquered death, not just for himself, but all of us who believe in him. So this is the ultimate demonstration of his power. The power to save and give eternal life. That's why this statement is so important. So as we learned last week, he's the gate or the door that we go through to find eternal life through Jesus. We find the safe pasture, the provision, the light to guide us. He's the power that sustains us. So it gives us the strength to endure, to keep going, the peace to remain calm in the storm when things are just falling apart around us, and the hope to keep pressing on when we don't feel like there's any good that can come out of the situation. So in this power, is, it's available to us, and it's ready to every single person that chooses to believe in Jesus. There's no discrimination on, on race or gender or age or social status or how, how chubby I am. God is there and available for absolutely every single person. It's a gift that's freely given to absolutely anyone who chooses to accept it. All we need to do is remain in Him. And his power will work in and through us when we don't even expect it sometimes. It's another picture of me and Clayton, mostly because I can. Um, can I be vulnerable with you guys for a minute? Sometimes it's hard to talk about the, 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 the hard stuff. So, so I'll say this. Being, being the father of a special needs child which if you don't know, most of you do. Clayton has autism. He's level two autism. There's three levels. Um, I don't always feel super close to Jesus every single day parenting this kid. There's days that, that I'm frustrated beyond imagination. I get frustrated with him and I get frustrated with myself. There's days that I feel like an absolute failure at being a dad because it almost never goes to plan. I also naturally suffer from depression and anxiety. Most people don't necessarily know that because I don't really make it a big deal. But I take 300 milligrams of Wellbutrin every single day to help me feel normal. So with all those ingredients, this whole life thing has has the potential to be a complete disaster. But it's not. And I am thankful for that. I actually feel incredibly blessed every single day and I'm excited about my future every single day because even though I go through these moments of, of inadequacy and struggle with the way things are some days, I still know that I'm carried by the power of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. 
I know that I'm living in God's will, and He'll carry me for, for as long as it takes and as long as I put my faith and seek rest in Him. We have to remain connected to Jesus. Remaining connected to Him. It, it's not just a one-time decision. It's not the, the, okay, I've decided to follow Jesus and that's it. It's a continuous daily commitment. It's an ongoing relationship that requires our active participation. This connection, it's not just about religious rituals or empty traditions or following rules that we think are there. Those things are long gone. It's about a deep, personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and that is it. It's about knowing Him. It's about loving Him. And it's about living in obedience to His Word. One way we stay connected to Jesus is through prayer. Prayer is our direct line of communication with God. It's how we express our love. It's how we express our gratitude. It's how we express our adoration for Him. It's also how we present our needs and our concerns and our desires. As we spend time in prayer, we grow. We grow in our understanding of who God is and what He wants from us and, and who we are and how we can improve ourselves. We also gain strength and wisdom and guidance for our daily lives. So in addition to prayer, we stay connected to Jesus through the study of His Word. The Bible is God's written revelation of Himself to us. So the people that ask for a sign, they have it right in front of them. It's through the Bible that we, that we learn about God's character and His love for us and His love for humanity and, and His plan for our lives. As we, as we read and meditate on God's Word, we're, we're transformed by its truth. I think sometimes we try too hard. We, we read the Bible and we, sp we expect some instant change and we, and we work really hard to manifest something of what we read in, into our lives in an effort to feel something from God. Well, I read these words, so I need to feel something now, so I'm going to make something happen so I feel something. And I think we need to slow down and just simply read it and accept it and not expect anything from it. We'll get something from it, but we can't expect it to happen when we want it to happen. Just flow through the words and let it wash over you. And I promise you that if you make a habit of just sitting down and doing that, it, it can just be a couple verses a day. I hope it's more, but it can just be a couple verses a day. You'll start to see and hear from God. It may not be that day, it may not be that week, but something's going to happen down the line and you'll think back to those words that you read and you'll know what to do. You'll know how to feel. Then you can say, okay, God, I get it. We're also equipped and, and empowered to to live out our faith in a world that often opposes God's values and principles. Psalm 119, 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. So the Christian life was never meant to be lived in isolation. We need each other for encouragement and support and accountability. As we share our lives with each other, we, we grow in our faith and we become more like Jesus. And it truly does take a village. It takes the community. We need each other and we need encouragement for our journey. Iron sharpens iron. It's through living with each other that, in this way that we'll actually discover what the image of God really is. J.I. Packer, he said, once you become aware that the main business that you are here for is to know God, most of life's problems fall into place on their own accord. It's absolutely true, and I've seen that. Life is about knowing God intimately and personally. It's 
It's about making him the center of our lives and the source of our strength. People are searching for their purpose in life and they're trying to create a purpose in their life. But if we stop, our real purpose is to know God. And then God will give us his purpose for our life. When we do this, when, when, when we, we'll find that our, our problems and our challenges and our, our struggles are put into proper perspective. We won't have to be afraid of the things that happen anymore because we'll know that we're not alone in them. We also find that we're able to, to bear more fruit for his glory. As Christians, we're, we're called to, to live like Christ, to love others, and to bear fruit accordingly. But you, you might ask yourself, what's the tangible fruit of a Christ-like life, and, and what am I looking for? What's the fruit that I can see? What is this? In what areas can I pray that God will grow me and challenge me as I strive to be in a relationship with him? So the fruit that we're, we're referring to is, is it's the visible and tangible evidence of the transformation in the presence of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life. The New Testament mentions several aspects of, of, of the spiritual fruit that Christians might produce in their lives, and it's, we'll go back to the list, actually. There we go. These things, it's, like I said, it's not an exhaustive list, but I hope it's a good start for us today. I'm going to look at each one of these. Love, love is, a, a, is considered the greatest fruit of all. It involves showing selfless love towards God and others, even in difficult circumstances. That's a hard one for us right now in this culture. Jesus emphasizes the importance of love. We're called to experience joy, a a deep and lasting joy that comes from a relationship with Christ, not just fleeting happiness and moments of ecstasy this joy is not based on our circumstances and it's not based on what's happening in the moment it's not based on our emotional change and status because that's going to change all the time this is a deep and continuous joy that we can only find in a relationship with christ peace is the inner calm and contentment that comes from knowing christ as your lord and savior despite the turmoil in the world Patience, we're called to show patience and endurance as we, we live out our lives with others. Kindness and goodness, these qualities involve knowing benevolence and generosity and moral excellence and how we treat and respond to others. Faithfulness, it implies being reliable and trustworthy and, and loyal to God and His teachings. Gentleness, we're encouraged to show humility, meekness, gentleness in our reactions with others. Self-control involves mastering our desires and our impulses, allowing the Holy Spirit to guide and govern our actions. Additionally, fruit can be leading others to Christ as we're called to be witnesses and and ambassadors for Jesus, sharing the gospel and leading others to salvation. Or it can be doing good works. We're encouraged to do good deeds and acts of service. It's not going to save us, but we're called to do it after we're saved. Reflecting Christ's love to others and making a positive impact in our communities, in our worlds. So it's essential to note that the production of spiritual fruit is not achieved through human efforts but through the work of the holy spirit in our lives as we grow in our relationship with christ the fruit of the spirit becomes more evident in our lives and we're able to see the fruit and transformation so if you say to me hey i don't feel very kind or i don't feel a lot of joy or i'm not at peace or i don't feel very good i don't have much self-control you need more Jesus. You need more time in the Word. You need to meditate on it. And you'll find it. But it's a transformation that has to happen. It doesn't just happen. 
We have to be intentional, and we have to seek it. That's our part. Remember the, that, that phrase, it's not a marathon. It's not a sprint. I'm sorry, it's not a sprint, but it's a marathon. We're in it for the long haul. We're in it for eternity's sake. And, and we know that the process of take sanctification, it takes time. Our change, our transformation takes time. So as we close today and, and wrap up this series, it's important to remember that Jesus has so much more to say than what we've covered these past few weeks. And there's several more I am statements in the Gospel of John for you to explore and commit to memory. So your homework is to read the book of John. Knowing Jesus is a, is a critical part of following him. We can, we can say we trust him and, and think about him and believe in him, but we have to dig in. And we have to seek him. Paul says that we need to have the mind of Christ. We can't obtain the mind of someone that we don't know anything about. One of the best ways to know him is to listen to what he says about himself. So read his words in the, in the New Testament. He's the bread of life. He's the light of the world. He's the gate or the door, and he is the true vine. He's also the Messiah and the Savior of, of everyone, all humanity. So I hope that this is the start of a journey for you or a continuation of a journey for you with Jesus. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for bringing us here again this morning just to be with each other, to love on each other. Lord, I pray you'll be with Harold this morning in his struggles. be with his family and his doctors. Lord, and be with Jerry as he enters this road of recovery. <clears throat> Help him to, to know that you're there with him and Harold as well. Help them to know that they can lean on you in these moments, these unknown moments, these scary moments. Help them to find that peace and joy in their lives, regardless of their circumstances. And be with their doctors and their caretakers and help them to make the right decisions and touch them, Lord, so that they can use their God-given gifts to heal people. Be with the family, Lord, that needs comforting. <clears throat> Help them to know that you're there with them so that they can find their peace and joy regardless of the circumstances. And help us to know that in our own lives, Lord, that you are with us always, no matter what is going on. And if we just lean on you and we fall into the word, we'll find that comfort that we need in the midst of a very stressful situation, in the midst of our anxiety going through the roof, sometimes when we feel like we just need to scream out because we're so frustrated. Help us instead to cry out to you and fall into your arms. Lord, we love you and we give this all to you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you, Adam. Amen. All right, everybody, stand up one more time. We're going to praise God again.